design my lesson and then I'm coming back to a design. Um, and they are, they're sharing through their VLCs. They're driven by the kids. The kids were, they could, I think if you talk to any of them, they could really speak to what they were doing and why they were doing it and what they had learned from it. And like the thing that I think with UDL is that it's a weird metaphor, but this is how I think of it. Like your learning is like a piece of clay, and in the past, without UDL, your teachers got to mold it and stuff. But with UDL, you get to help in how you learn and like put have your input in when you're deciding how you want to write your story or what you want to do when you read, how you're gonna take your notes. It really helps you when you learn. That's great. So I've never been in a class that wasn't UDL. Yeah. What was that like? Oh, I didn't really like it that much because, like, because you didn't have a lot of freedom and choice, and you wouldn't like be able, you only have to sit at your desk, and that didn't feel comfortable for me. Oh, you and, like to move around a little bit. Yeah, you okay. do. Okay. All right. Thank you. I love the process of UDL because it's the first thing that I've started thinking about instead of focusing more on the product and the things that they're doing. It helps me decide what's the best way for them to get the most out of the lesson and who's going to get the most out of it from which process. And they have to know that if thinking about things and brainstorming helps them learn better and helps them write better, then they need to help themselves adapt by making those tools because it's all about them learning what helps them learn. Because if you know that, you are so far ahead of the game and if I can help them understand that in kindergarten, that will make them very successful for later. I don't want to have to read all this. I want to click on that. Oh, I know that. I want to click on this. So decide. These are your choices for how you want to get this information in. But remember, your purpose is to answer this question. Which one did you choose? Which one I decide to use the book because you just want to get on the computer. I will always, always get like, it will say the definition. That's that. It will come with different words. And after that, I'll look for that. And it will get very annoying. So when I go through the book, I think I'll get the right definition. And it always turns out to be the right definition. Um, and so once I found out that I like the book, I decided to do a diagram because I think with the diagram and with the visual right, pictures, people will be able to have a better explanation of what it looks like and yeah, what it is at the same time. How can I show what I know? For learning? I chose to watch the video because I think it helps me personally as a learner so I can see somewhat of a diagram and listen to what people are saying about what I'm learning. So. I fully understand um, about the convection zone and how sunlight reaches the earth. I have a student, I have one at least, one student I can believe it right now, who was failing. He was failing. Now he's a, really a lead. He got a 10 out of 10 on the first, before last quiz. This time he got a nine just because I'm picky. I took some points off units. He's just, he's so proud of himself. Never, never got so, those great before. Because he's, he's, he, he's choosing how to learn. I let him choose the way he can learn better. So one of the pieces that I really liked with UDL <coughs> <clears throat> that I wanted to focus on more with my students is this thinking piece about what do they know and is what they're doing helping them learn. Uh, and so the metacognition piece is, has been important to me. I have people ask me, so how can you teach high school physics to middle school students? I'm like, well, half of it's content and half of it's thinking. Half of it's ma you know, managing yourself and recognizing how to tackle something difficult. So with UDL, the ideas of giving the students choices but then having them evaluate you know, well, how many students should be doing this? How much time should I spend on this? And then having them choose to do an activity and say, well, that helped me, or it didn't. Uh, and being more reflective of their own learning 
um, that's the piece that I really want to bring into it. But now second semester, she's changed her um, her way of teaching into doing like YouTube videos and you would watch it at home and then coming in class and you get help and it's much more helpful and effective because now my grades have boosted two letter grades and um, it's very helpful for myself and I'm sure it's very helpful for other students. Your grades have done what? They've boosted up two letter Ooh. grades. <laughs> It's more interactive. Good for you. Yeah, That's great. Good. You feel like you probably know how to do the problems. Yeah, I know how to do more of the math, like the molality and molarity. So that's really nice. Great. And I can really feel, I feel the difference already, even though it had been only, what, four months? What difference months. do you feel? Not only on the grades. I feel like I'm getting, I'm having a better relationship with the students also. There are students in my classes who would never, talk to me, would never raise their hand and ask me questions in class. Now I'm walking around, those students are talking to me. They are asking me questions while they are doing the homework. So I can feel I'm not the same teacher who used to stand in front of the room.